10 Best Picks presents the Top 10 Best Video Cameras. Starting at number 10. Panasonic Lumix GH5. The Panasonic Lumix DC GH5 is the fifth in the company's industry-changing video and stills hybrid lineup. With its 20MP 4 thirds sensor and deep video-centric feature set, it looks likely to pick up where the GH4 left off as a favorite of indie filmmakers and photographers whose interests venture into the realm of motion picture work. The GH5's feature set moves on suitably far from its predecessor, but the company says the GH4 will remain in its lineup as a lower cost option for users who don't need the additional capability that the GH5 brings. The GH5 also gains a more advanced algorithm for interpreting movement within the scene to reduce the risk of the camera getting confused by movement as it builds its depth map. This, combined with faster sensor readout, should mean faster and more accurate autofocus. Further to this, Panasonic has added more AF configuration options to help the camera understand subject movement and the correct response to it. Panasonic is keen to stress the GH5 is intended for stills as well as video. The greater processing power of the GH5 allows the camera to consider a wider area of the image when calculating the color values from each pixel. Panasonic says this makes it possible to extract greater JPEG resolution from the captured image. At number 9. Panasonic HCVX 981K. If there was one premium digital camcorder that was really tough to beat back in 2015, it was the Panasonic HCVX 870. Critics praised the $800 camcorder for its sharp HD and 4K quality and plenty of great features. It was a stark reminder on how awesome it is to own one of these things compared to a smartphone that can 4K video. You have to remember the big roles things like lenses, microphones, sensors, form factor and manual controls play. This is the kind of features to expect from a modern high model, and the tough competition continues to challenge companies like Panasonic to innovate. Panasonic did a lot with the Panasonic HCVX870 to the point that its successor, the Panasonic HCVX 981K doesn't offer many new features, but it is a necessary refresh that makes this camcorder a more attractive package. The Panasonic HCVX 981K is the 2016 replacement of the VX870 and now serves as Panasonic's most affordable 4K camcorder if you don't want to take the older models into account. It still remains an interesting piece of technology because it has a huge feature set but weighs less than a pound. It is still heavier than Panasonic's cheaper camcorders, but the overall look and feel still puts this device in the category of compact camcorders. It may not be the kind of camcorder that professional cinematographers would use, but we are also in the age where people make movies with iPhones, and the Panasonic HCVX 981K totally fits the bill better in terms of overall video quality. Picking the Panasonic HCVX 981K over the older VX870 is a matter of deciding if the in-editing features is worth considering. It does make the camcorder a more worthy thing to own if you are still going through the transition from a 1080p screen to a 4K one. But since there are virtually no other improvements, it is best to check the price of the VX870 if you simply no longer care about 1080p or don't wish to go through the hassles of editing 4K video. Number 8 of my list. Panasonic HCX1. There are casual camcorder enthusiasts who like the results of their video and still shoots to look professional. Several brands and models accomplish that objective with a wide range of pricing. The camcorder aficionado looking for the latest in professional equipment should focus attention on the new Panasonic HCX1. There's no hesitation in identifying the resemblance of its camera action to that of the Lumix DMC GH4 mirrorless micro four-thirds digital camera. Panasonic deserves a compliment for including specialized features throughout the top of their line. What else is there about the HCX1 that brings its recognition as a 4K camcorder for professionals? There is a wealth of features designed to make the specialized videographer's task more alluring. Select MOV, MP4, or AVCHD file format. The camcorder has an extensive range of recording modes that deliver a choice of frame rate, bit rate and image quality selections. The triple manual rings on the lens barrel provide iris, zoom and focus operations. 13 user buttons are located on the camcorder's exterior. 
Four are located on the LCD touch panel, while the remaining nine are on the body. Focus Assist functions include MF Assist, Expand Peak, and One Push Aft. The Panasonic HCX1 Micro Drive Focus Unit delivers stable, high-speed intelligent AF. Superior tracking performance results in accurate focusing, an important part of 4K shooting. Customize operation settings to adjust speed, area width and tracking sensitivity. The Panasonic HCX1 is a viable choice when upgrading camcorders. Genres such as reporting and independent film will be enhanced by the smooth video achieved with this system. The dual cards and recording capability are easier to achieve with the compact, light unit. Features may take a bit of practice, but the resulting professional product is well worth the time it takes to master them. Coming at number 7. The Casso EK7000 Pro. The Acaso EK7000 looks a lot like a GoPro. It works a lot like a GoPro. The videos and photos look similar to the ones coming out of GoPro cameras. But here's the kicker. It's priced at just a fraction of a GoPro. One of the challenges that GoPro has faced in recent years is knockoffs. After basically inventing the action camera market, GoPro has run into competition, both from premium manufacturers like Sony, Nikon, and Garmin, that bring their own expertise and innovation to the concept, but also from overseas manufacturers who can copy the GoPro cameras without copying GoPro's premium pricing. Some are better than others some are even downright terrible. If you haven't heard of the brand before, you're not alone. I hadn't either. They seem to market an odd assortment of products. The EXIF data embedded by the camera refers to it as a SunPlus SP5K series digital camera, and you can also find what appears to be the same camera marketed under different brand names. There's also an EK7000 Pro model, which includes a touchscreen and video stabilization. I have a detailed comparison of the EK7000 and EK7000 Pro separately. There are four shooting modes. Video, Still Photos, Burst Photos, Time Lapse. I'll go into each of these in more detail below. There's only the one field of view. A standard wide mode. It's not as wide as with GoPros. Here's a side-by-side -side example, with one shot with a GoPro HER06 Black, and the other shot with the Acaso EK7000. At number 6. DJI Osmo Action Cam. Let's start with the basics. The Osmo Action looks a hell of a lot like a GoPro. It has the same dark, boxy shape with a lens on the left. Around back, as with the HER07, is a touchscreen display. The Osmos is a wider 16:9 screen, which gives you a larger image, but the screen is a lot dimmer than the GoPros which I found frustrating in bright sunlight. The biggest physical difference is that the Osmo Action has a screen on the front of the camera too. It's a small, one. 4-inch square, so you can't see a ton, but it's generally good enough to see if your silhouette is in frame or not. Definitely handy. The two cameras ultimately have more similarities than differences. Both can shoot video at resolutions up to 4K 60 and 1080p 240, as well as 12MP still photos in JPG and RAW formats. The Osmo Action is slightly more waterproof than the HER07. Both cameras have detachable front lens covers which can be switched for North Dakota filters or polarizers, but I found DJI's easier to swap in and out. Battery life is more or less identical. I did a rundown test with both cameras set to 4K24, stabilized, with Wi-Fi on but not connected, and the GoPro's GPS turned off. The HER07 Black made it to 88 minutes before giving up the ghost, while the Osmo Action made it to 90 basically a wash, in other words. Enabling GPS on the GoPro will shorten its runtime a bit, but we're certainly not docking it for including that option. Audio was pretty much a wash. Neither camera has an amazing mix setup. The GoPro's mix have a bit of a warmer tone, which I found more pleasing, but it's dealer's choice. The one strange thing was that, when I mounted both cameras to the handlebars of my mountain bike, the DJI recorded this loud abrasive clicking sound which the other two cameras managed to soften to the point that it was barely noticeable, so you just hear the sound of the wind and the tires on the ground. Much more pleasant. For more information and price, check out the product links in description underneath the video. Halfway of my listed number 5. Sony HDR-CX405. 
Sony is one of those big technology companies that like to show off tons of new stuff at CES, and January 2015 was no exception. 4K was once again the theme as the ultra-higher resolution screen technology is more polished than ever and pretty much ready for mainstream adoption. However, current 4K TV owners and those that plan on buying a hot new Sony 4K display don't have to wait for all the cool 4K content. Sony's action camera and camcorder lineups are ready for the task. One of the latest models is even cheaper than its predecessor making the dream of creating 4K videos far more attainable. Apparently, Sony concentrated on the two 4K camcorder models and made its other camcorder model a mere footnote. The Sony HDR CX405 is also part of the 2015 lineup, and it looks a lot like the older Sony HDR CX330 model. What makes the HDR CX405 intriguing is its attractively low price. It is confusing enough for the CX405 to have a higher number than the CX330, but ends up with fewer features. What is left is determining if Sony made the right cuts to reach the $229 price. The Sony HDR CX405 looks like a Sony camcorder that should have been part of last year's lineup. That's because the HDR CX405 looks exactly like the CX330 retaining both the dimensions and weight. But that shouldn't deter casual consumers since the 6.7 ounce weight is good enough for easy mobility. The camcorder has a nice hand strap and feels more natural to hold for recording purposes than a smartphone. Being a Sony camcorder, the Sony HDR CX405 retains the main characteristics of a typical modern consumer camcorder including the mighty useful built-in USB cable which you can either use to transfer data or charge the unit. As long as you are contented in leaving the camcorder charged close to the power source, you shouldn't have to bring a separate USB cable. Coming in at number 4 of my list. Canon Vixia HFR800. There's nothing like looking at a fantastic video from a smartphone or iPhone to remind us of the fun and convenience of having a portable camcorder on hand to capture special moments or any action. It was a delight to give the handheld Canon Vixia HFR800 a try to see which of the favorite features remain and what the Canon engineers have changed or added in the 2017 model. The sleek new styling resembles a compact, elongated cylinder. It neatly fits large and small hands. Conveniently check how your photos are framed by observing them on the large screen display that folds out on the left. The exterior is impressive. Curiosity about what's going on inside the camcorder didn't disappoint, either the company has always been a leader in photographic experiences, and the Canon Vixia HFR800 is no different. It carries forward the best features of the HFR700 without an increase in price. The HFR700 and HFR800 have nearly identical features, such as the 3.0-inch touchscreen, flash memory, and 1080p at 24, 30, and 60fps. The baby mode daily filming and picture feature, so popular in the R70 70 seconds and R80 80 seconds camcorders is also present, though it lacks the baby monitor portion because it has no Wi-Fi. The MSRP of $299 varies depending on where it's purchased. In some cases, the pinch of an increased charge is softened by additional products that add to the camcorder's ease of use. Unbelievable imaging performance is delivered by the Digic DV4 image processor. It was amazing to see how the system captured more light even in dark scenes. The result? More noise-free brighter images. Handheld shooting is speedy and provides clear images thanks to image stabilization. Enjoy memories to share and look back upon with the 1920x1080 resolution from Canon's higher resolution 3. 28 megapixel Full HD CMOS image sensor. The on-chip noise reduction produces bright clarity for every frame and results in lifelike Full HD video with natural color. The experience of playing video back on a large HDTV demonstrates why the camcorder is an enticing product to own. Canon Vixia HFR800 delivers an impressive high-definition 1080p camcorder at a low price. Built-in features like adjustment settings and color correction greatly reduce the need to edit by taking care of problems before the shot is snapped. Image stabilization provides a professional video without requiring a lengthy amount of time. The hand strap provides extra grip while carrying the R800 and filming on the go. 
The supplemental app and connect station cover the lack of Wi-Fi and make it simpler to create vlogs and picture albums at an affordable cost. At number 3. Nikon Coolpix P1000. Four years ago, the typical super zoom bridge camera had a zoom power of around 50x over the years, that number has slowly risen before leveling out at 65x. And then came the Nikon Coolpix P900, whose 83x, 24 to 2000 mm equa. Lens suddenly took zoom ranges from really long to absurd. Nikon's new Coolpix P1000 has moved the zoom needle to ludicrous, with an equivalent focal length of 24 to 3000 mm. That's right, 3000 mm. This is a lens so long that we were able to fill the frame with a 1 meter, 3. 3 foot tall monkey that's 70 meters, 230 feet away. While the Coolpix P900 was limited to full HD video resolution, the P1000 is able to record high quality 4K UHD video at 3840 x 2160 resolution in H264 MPG4 format, which is impressive. The camera has an HDMI port to output video to an external monitor or recorder, and even has a microphone port to record external audio. Take a look at this sample video from Nikon, which shows what a close-up of a lion's face looks like at 3000 mm. I don't do much video, but after looking at this footage, I think the P1000 would be a better candidate for 4K video at 3000 mm than stills although Nikon states that the P1000 is capable of only yielding 250 images from a single charge, I was easily able to surpass this number when shooting in the field. Keep in mind that SIPA numbers are calculated based on usage of LCD, EVF and flash, so if you do not use flash at all, minimize the use of EVF and LCD, you will get a lot more images than stated by Nikon. This does come at a cost, though. For one thing, the P1000 is huge, and its lens is challenged by a slow maximum aperture, and thus diffraction, and image quality can be compromised by the same thermal and atmospheric issues that are typical of images taken at extreme distances with any super telephoto lens. Besides the lens, the P1000 features a 16MP a half. 3 BSICMOS sensor, a fully articulating LCD, and high-res EVF, RAW support and the ability to capture 4K video. The P1000 has a spec sheet, almost as long as its lens. From raw support to a high-res EVF, the camera has just about everything you'd want in a bridge camera, save for decent battery life and a touchscreen, a glaring omission. Image stabilization is a requirement on super zoom cameras, and Nikon's Dual Detect VR reduces shake by up to 5 stops, depending on focal length, according to Nikon. Being 2018, it's no surprise that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are also on board. For more information and price, check out the product links in description underneath the video. Coming at number 2, Panasonic HCV770. These days you hear about 4K cameras a lot. Although the Panasonic HCV770 was released not so long ago, only offering HD recording may seem a bit dated. Despite its obvious limitations, the camcorder does bring some great features to the table. We now live in a world where marketing 4K products is the norm, but the HCV770 is not a complete dinosaur. For starters, it supports several Wi-Fi capabilities, including remote control. And since image quality is the main attraction of products like these, the HCV770 delivers impressive colors and detail. Above all, the Panasonic HCV770 is budget-friendly. This is a great option if you're not that interested in jumping into the higher resolution club just yet. The HCV770 is similar to the HCW850 released by Panasonic in 2014. It carries the same look but lacks the secondary camera of that model, a feature that is also in the newer HCWX970. The omission of that feature for this model isn't a total loss since it's not really that necessary for shooting video. Besides, the absence of a secondary camera has helped keep the cost of this camcorder down. However, it can't be denied that the HCV770 does have certain limitations. For one, it doesn't have a lens ring, which is really useful for achieving focus. Instead, the camcorder relies on manual settings to get the job done. It's a bit of an inconvenience, and that might hurt its chances with potential buyers. 
Overall, the Panasonic HCV770 is a decent choice. It has excellent image quality, and it's not too pricey. If you're not that into 4K recording right now, take this camcorder into consideration. And number 1. Panasonic HCWX F991K gadgets and consumer electronics with some sort of 4K resolution specification started off as a gimmick and is slowly making the transition to the mainstream as the 4K displays get cheaper. It still isn't widely adopted considering you won't find your favorite movies in 4K format just yet, but it isn't stopping big tech companies from adding the ability to record 4K video in just about anything from camcorders to DSLR cameras, action cameras and even smartphones. It is easy to think that 4K video simply looks better than 1080p video because of the higher pixel count and that technically is true if you compare the two on a 4K display, but that doesn't mean that all devices that can record 4K video offer the same results. The Panasonic HCWX F991K is somewhat in the middle ground as far as 4K video quality is concerned sacrificing professional quality for portability while having far more power than a modern smartphone. The HCWX F991K takes over the HCWX 970's flagship throne, and to many people owning a flagship camcorder product, it isn't really a huge deal. Camcorder manufacturers usually add incremental updates to make the flagship more appealing than the older model, but not to the point where one might be interested in selling their older flagship camcorder to buy the latest model. While the Panasonic HCWX F991K doesn't add too many new features, it offers one new thing that makes the upgrade very appealing, and that's the addition of an electronic viewfinder. The Panasonic HCWX F991K turned out to be a huge improvement over its predecessor. Considering the $999 price tag, not everyone may wish to upgrade, but the EVF and extra effects clearly add more flexibility to budding cinematographers. For more information and price, check out the product links in description underneath the video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel, share this video and hit the like button.